left the west coast, I'm now heading inland. Deep, 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 deep into the mountain. And the place I can't wait to get to is the mountain region of Barbagia. Nicknamed by the Romans, land of the barbarians. It's here the island inhabitants would retreat to, over hundreds of years, passionately protecting their land against the likes of the Romans and the Spanish. Sardinian people are extremely proud of their tradition and their land, and so much so that they actually refer themselves as Sardi and not Italian. And to understand what Sardinia is all about, you must go and visit Orgosolo. And that's where I'm going now. The town of Orgosolo lies in the heart of the Barbagia Mountains. Historically, it has a fierce reputation, famed for bandits and its aggressive stance against the Italian state. Today, it continues to be a strong symbol of the Sardinians' fighting spirit and passion, thanks to an abundance of artwork on its walls. Murals everywhere. I'm wondering if there is a Banksy here. The first mural was painted in 1969, in protest against the authoritarian Italian government, and the tradition has continued ever since. I'm hoping local resident Elisa will be able to explain to me what this striking artwork represents. See, I was expecting one or two, but everywhere I go here, there are murals everywhere. Some are quite happy, colorful, but then all of a sudden you get the aggressive one, like military. And why are they so different? Well, um, when it started, the first years, all murals were political. They were supposed to make discussion about a certain topic. So they stand on news in newspapers, they just put whatever they, you know, they yeah. wanted to say about yeah, politics yeah. on the walls. They were made to say something that was important then. How do they look so good? Because I was thinking they should kind of start to fade away with time. Sure. Well, they are constantly restored. So every two or three years, artists come here to keep them alive. See, this to me is a, a typical scenario of Italian mothers and grandmothers. I'm very familiar to this. Yeah. Well, the theme here is Sardinian daily life. And this mural in particular is celebrating women for their important role they have in, in the family. See, I like that, where it says, Saggezza Antica, ancient wisdom. That's what, that's, that is, is very right. This looks impressive and aggressive at the same time. What's the story here? Well, this mural was made to remember the facts of Prato Bello, when in 1969, the Italian state decided to build a permanent military range in our territory, meaning that shepherds had to leave uh, the area, which was fundamental for our economy. So the whole town went there to occupy the area for six days until they decided not to build the military range. They do look a bit angry. Well, uh, something they, is happening. They, they were fighting for their life. They look like fighters. <laughs> they do. And I have to say, I'm so happy that I've experienced all this because it's just very beautiful and you can really understand the people around here. And it's the spirit of those people and this town that I will take away with me. All too soon, I'm back on the road. But I want to stay in this beautiful Barbagia mountain region a little bit longer. As well as such scene, my journey is still about food. In Sardinia, there are more shepherds than fishermen. 
and wherever I look, there are farms everywhere. On the menus around here, you will always find lots of meats, lots of vegetables, really everything that they got on the farm. And Sardinian is also well known for the cheeses. I'm really interested to learn more about the Sardinian diet, especially as Sardinia is known as a blue zone, one of the few areas in the world where people are more likely to live to 100 years old. Now that's what I'm talking about. So I'm paying a visit to Shepherd Martino, here in the Supra Monte Agriturismo. Here on the farm, they still live a traditional Sardinian shepherd's lifestyle. Working the land 365 days a year, braiding, growing and making everything they cook. So if anyone can unlock the secrets about the true Sardinian diet, I think Martino is my man. Po la dieta del pastore, la dieta della Sardegna, cioè che cosa mangiate, che cosa fate? Allora, innanzitutto i nostri prodotti che sono il formaggio fatto da Martino explained to me that their traditional diet is very simple. Meats that are cured so they can be taken away to the fields. Cheese made with sheep milk, known for its high nutritional value, and fresh homemade honey for a bit of sweet. All brought together by this rustic bread, pane carasau. It's a very thin bread which he gets baked and is dry. And he said, is very important for the Sardinian tradition and shepherd's tradition because this is the only bread that they can take with them and would last for 20, 25 days. Facciamo un po' di nastagino. Certo. I've asked to taste something because I'm salivating with all the smell here. Da, dove iniziamo? Da questo? Oh. Okay. This one here catches my eye because the color is beautiful. Pecorino, eh? Pecorino. I want to try. Da, fammi una fettina di assaggiare, eh? Okay. Soft, a little bit like um, a cheddar cheese would be. Extremely tasty. A buono questo. I can see this one on um, grated on pasta. Okay, ricotta. Passiamo alla ricotta. Fresh ricotta. Come me la do a mangiare questo? Allora, questa qua, il criterio sarebbe questo, caro Gino. Mm. He said, now I'm going to show you how to do it. Vai. Apriamo. È neutra. Chiamiamola so, così. This one is absolutely clean in flavor. Honey. Runny honey. Okay. Vai, Gino. E eh, vai. Ok. Un pezzo di pane. Ah, so Martino is explaining, you use a piece of bread as a spoon, like the proper shepherds do. Okay. E mangi proprio anche il cucchiaio. But you eat the tablespoon. <laughs> Buono. Mm. Fantastico. See, sometimes we go absolutely mental, you know, to create an antipasti. What should I do? How complicated should it be? This, to me, is the perfect antipasti ever. Bon, 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 bon. Let's go talk about meats here. Parliamo delle carni. Okay. Allora, qua, logicamente, col maiale era l'unica... I was interested to hear the pig is the main animal they farm here. Because once it's butchered, the shepherds can cure it in salt and pepper and it can be preserved all year round. Curing meat has a long history in Italy, tracing back to pre-Roman times. There are hundreds of varieties of Italian salami, each region using different consistencies of pork and combinations of spices. So I'm really keen to taste this soft local salame called salsiccia sarda. They make sure that the skin is out, and then... Mm. See, different from the Neapolitan salami, where I come from, Naples. This has got less pepper, less spices. You got quite a lot of grizzle, so it's just sweet, sweet, and melting in the mouth. Well, Finally, it seems only fitting to wash everything down with some cannonau. A small glass of this strong Sardinian wine is drunk at almost every meal. And some argue it keeps heart disease down on the island. Oh, he said cannonau 
you cannot call it Cannonau now if it's not at least 14% volume. If it's too weak, it's not a Cannonau. now. Mm. It's strong and it's good that it's strong because it can take all these flavors here. If it was a weak wine, it wouldn't work. Completava il pranzo. Martino said a good Cannonau, now, it should always complete your dinner. Salute. Salute. E grazie. Time to heat the road again, complete with some cheeky pecorino to cook with later. That was nice of him to give me the cheese. Come on, let's have a selfie. Say cheese! Today I've been learning about the pride and passion of the Sardinian people and the amazing diet that sustains them. So to discover even more, I'm crossing the island for the village of Santo Lusurgio. It's the home of another symbol of Sardinia, Filo e Ferro, or as I know it, Moonshine. This liqueur has been produced here for centuries and for a long time was made in secret by the farmers. Ex-local mechanic Carlo is so passionate about preserving the traditional tipple, he turned his workshop into a distillery and was happy to share a little glass with me. See, this is quite cute, the story, because uh, filiferro is, is uh, uh, if you translate in English, is, uh, is a wire. Mi fai vedere un esempio del filiferro? I just asked him to show me how they used to do it in the old days. They used to make spirits illegally because they didn't want to pay the tax. And they used to hide the bottle, even in barrels or under the ground. And then you have famous wire coming up and then you just, it's like fishing. There you go. Illegal alcohol. Fantastico, grazie. Assaggiamo, dai, se no a fine facciamo solo chiacchiere qua. I said, let's try, otherwise we talk, we talk, and I want to see what it's all about. It's quite a simple process, how you make filet ferro, because it's nothing more than distilled wine. The vapors from the wine, very slowly, in this kind of machinery here, it drops into the barrel, and it creates this beautiful liqueur. This is for evolving perfumes. He just said you need to shake around the glass because it's like one. You need to get all the smells and all the flavors coming together. Pronti? Salute. Thank you. Tutto insieme? No. E when you gonna tell me that you have to sip it? <coughs> ok, you have to learn one big lesson. File ferro, you drink it slowly, slowly. There is no need to do it in one go. Anyway, it's uh, buono. <coughs> ok, assaggiamone un po' alla volta. Ok? Fammi, dimmi che cosa devo assaggiare. I just ask him, let's do it again. Facciamo piano piano. Let's drink slowly, slowly this time. Mm. Beh, buono, eh? It's really nice. You get the wine coming through. If you sip it slowly, you don't get the, you know, the alcohol kind of flavor into your throat. So, lo bevi piano. Yeah. Io non posso bere più, perché sennò non riesco a cucinare. Sì, sì. No, I just said to Carlo, I can't drink anymore because I got cooking to get on with it. So, uh, come to the uh, dinner, take a bottle, and tonight we can stay all night drinking. All right? Okay. Good. <laughs> Salute. Sì, sì. Today, the symbols of Sardinia for me can be summed up in three words. Mountains, meat, and moonshine. Inspired by all that, 
I'm staying right here in Santo Lusurgio to cook a traditional Sardinian dish for Carlo and his friend. It's a rustic sausage and tomato pasta called gnocchetti sardi alla campidanese. As my grandmother used to say to me, whenever you start a good tomato sauce, you must start it with a fantastic soffritto. And what is soffritto is right here. I go celery, finely chopped carrots, and finely chopped onions. Pour olive oil into a pan on a medium heat and throw in all the veg. This is going to make a fantastic base to the pasta sauce. Sprinkle in some chopped fresh rosemary and season with salt. I wish you could smell the soffritto with the rosemary. It's just something else. Now is the time that you have to be patient because it needs to caramelize beautifully and they need to get nice and soft. This will probably take you seven to eight minutes. The next thing is sausage. I'm using Italian sausage because it's a coarse meat, which works well in this pasta sauce. What I wanted to make sure that you squeeze the meat out from the skin and go straight into the pan. So with your hands, just break it and keep the skin behind, yeah? That's very important. Perfect. Wash your hands and then very simply, Lower the heat and start to break the sausage into the soffritto. Squeeze in two tablespoons of tomato puree and we are ready to transform all these flavors into a simple but tasty sauce. Now, the tomatoes. To make a good tomato sauce, you must use tinned tomatoes. It will be impossible to do it with fresh tomato, otherwise then you have to deal with the skin, the seed. So, tomato straight in there. You make sure it's a good quality, so even if you pay a couple of pence more, they're gonna be worth it. Mix all together. And now, guys, is actually the best part of making this sauce. It's called piopea. Piopea is when the sauce starts to bubble away like this. Blop, 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 and make sure that the sauce piopea for about five minutes. My sauce is bubbling away. So I'm gonna add water, okay? And what the water is gonna do is gonna make sure that my sauce doesn't get too thick, but yet all the flavors get together beautifully. Bring to the boil, then leave it to simmer for 20 minutes. Once the sauce is reduced and rich, finish off with a few fresh basil leaves and season to taste. Oh, thick tomato sauce, flavor of the basil, you can get the sofrito, the sausage is nice and crumbled, beautiful. I want to rest my sauce for 10 minutes before serving, which is just enough time to cook my pasta in boiling salted water. I'm using gnocchetti sardi. With its conch-like shape and small ridges, it carries meat or tomato flavors fantastically. And of course, I'll cook it until it's just al dente. The secret of a good plate of pasta is very simple. Pasta goes into the sauce. Never just throw the sauce on top of the pasta because you want to get all the flavors together. So get your pasta and go straight into the sauce. I'm making sure that each little piece of pasta is well coated into the sauce just before you serve it. Yes, this is nice. For the final touch, a few gratings of the salty, sharp pecorino cheese from my mate, Martino the Shepherd. Ah, come on, look at that. 
This is what Sardinian food is all about. Simple ingredients with a spectacular result. My gnocchetti sardi alla Campidanese. Il pecorino, sai come facevamo fatto? All that's left to do is to tuck in and enjoy with Carlo, his good friend Gabriella, plus some traditional local singers thrown in for good measure. Well, when in Sardinia, why not? Grazie della visita. Salute to Sardinia and the Sardi. How about that?